What's up buddy? Welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skid Viz. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to create uh, achievement style images for your Discord bot. Um, it's actually really quick and simple and we're going to get to that. But first, please make sure to like and subscribe uh, so that I can keep making these videos. Without further ado, yeah, let's get started. All right, now here we are in Visual Studio. As usual, before we start, we wanna make sure we have a working bot. So if you don't have a bot or you don't have a working bot, please make sure to follow one of these links here to watch some tutorials from Dapper Dino, who's making some really good bot making tutorials. So as you can see, my bot is working. I've launched it and uh, the first thing it does is it sends me a message saying, hey, we are up and running. So that proves to me we are good to proceed. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is add some NuGet packages. So we'll go into the project, manage our NuGet packages, and we're going to search for one called Image Shark. Now, the one we're looking for is called Six Labors Image Sharp, and it's in preview right now, so it will be under this pre release checkbox. So, if we hit that, we should see the one we're looking for. There it is at the top Six Labors dot Image Sharp. So, we'll go ahead and add this to our package. And we're also going to need the second one here, the Six Labors Image Sharp dot Drawing. So let's install that as well. And that's it for now. We don't need the, the other one here, this .web one. We don't need that at the moment. We might at some other point in time, but not right now. Um, the next thing I went ahead and did is I created a folder here called images, which is where we're gonna wanna store our images. And I've created this thing called badge.png. And it's just an empty achievement, right? It's uh, It's got a light color as a background because our text is going to be black. Um, but this is basically where you would store all your different uh, medals, badges, achievements, notifications, whatever you're going to be using this for. This is where you store the artwork that you're going to write over. So as you can see, just the folder called images and the file badge.png. The next thing is I created a folder called helpers. Now on the uh, Image Sharp website on their GitHub, they've got a, a bunch of good tutorials or not tutorials, but examples of how they uh, how to use the library. So I went ahead and copied over one of their libraries and I've modified it a little bit. I'll have it in the descriptions so that you can download this as well but I basically made it so that they're, they have a couple methods that let you center and wrap text and that's basically what this is going to do. So I'm gonna bring in uh, that file and throw it in there. All uh, right, I'll show you that. Just drop that in there. So I've got a folder called helpers and I've got a file now called imagehelper.cs. And like I said, if you open this up, um, it, this comes right from their uh, example file for applying watermarks. Uh, but the main thing that we're going to be using is there's two methods in here. One is uh, one says one's called apply scaling watermark word wrap, and one is apply scaling watermark simple. Now, uh, as you can tell, the difference between them is that one is just simply going to center some text on the middle of, this, of the image, and the other one is going to wrap. Um, the text around the image so that it doesn't overflow. So we don't really need to know how this is working uh, for now. If you want to come through and look at this file and understand it so that you can modify it, maybe you want to apply some more padding to the sides or anything like that, uh, this is where you would do that. But for now, it's just in the background. It's there to help us uh, with this wrapping uh, text. All right, so the next thing now we're actually going to get right to the meat and potatoes, we're going to create a uh, new command file. So I'll just go ahead and add a new class. And I'm gonna call this one image commands. Okay, 
Now, uh, like all our other commands, this has to inherit from the base command module. And of course, to inherit from the base command module, you need the D sharp plus commands next uh, added in there. So uh, now I'll just go ahead and punch up a command real quickly. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is give our command a name, and I'm gonna call this one show badge uh, to make it easy to remember. Then we create the method for it, which is a public async task. Uh, we're calling the method show badge as well. And it's gonna take two parameters, a command context called CTX and an optional string called MSG, which we're defaulting to nothing. Um, I'll explain that in a second. The next thing we're gonna do is create another variable called IMG. And then we're going to use the image.load method to load our badge into that variable. So we give it the path to the image uh, and it will throw it into that IMG variable. One thing to be aware of is paths aren't the same across all operating systems. So if you're on a Mac or on Linux um, and this doesn't work, it might be because you're using the wrong slash to point to the file. Um, the next thing we'll do is create a font variable called font and it is of type font and it's going to go through your system fonts and find, it says create font, but we're going to find the font Arial and give it a default size of 15. Uh, the method we're going to use is going to resize the font if it gets if the text gets too long So this is just the default, but if the text is longer than the size of the image Then it will wrap and then it will reduce the font So that's what that does uh, The next thing we're gonna have is a variable called text message and this is gonna contain our default message so right here I am just saying congrats and then I'm getting the member's username. And then I say, you have leveled up, but you can make this say whatever you want. Uh, you can see I put the slash N in there. That's gonna create a new line for me so that everything isn't on one line. Um, and then this next little block here is an if block. It's basically saying if the parameter message, which we passed up here, if it's empty or if it's not empty, then replace this message with whatever was passed in. So by default this will say congrats username you have leveled up but if i wanted to pass it a command or a string uh, i will show that as an, an example in a second but it would replace this message with whatever you, you passed in now here comes the uh, important part we're creating another variable here called image clone and it's going to take the image that we passed at this badge.png and it's going to clone it because we don't want to do anything to the original image. We don't want to overwrite our original image. So we're basically making a copy of that image and then we're going to do something to it. So then we have a variable here called image context, which could be called whatever you want, but I'm calling it image context. And then what are we doing with that image context? We're calling that image helper class that I uh, told you about over here and we're calling the method apply scaling watermark, right? And here are the parameters for that. Uh, it needs an image context, so we're gonna pass it that image context. It needs a font, which we declared up here, so we're passing that. It needs a message to apply to the image, so we created that over here and here. Uh, and then it needs a color, so you can come in here and set this to color.black or color.blue or any of the other enumerations, which are possible so we've got alice blue aqua beige all the colors you can think of in our example we'll just use black um, the next thing is a padding how, how much padding to have on the left and right side so we're setting that to 10 and then the last parameter that it takes is whether or not we're going to wrap so if you're not a good wrapper this is false if you are a good wrapper cool no, this is gonna determine whether or not we want the text to wrap uh, if, it, if it's too long or if we, it just goes off the edge. Um, so for like an achievement or something, a short message, you would set this to false so that it's just in the middle. Um, but for a longer message, you might wanna set it to true so that it wraps the text accordingly. So that's gonna do that to image clone. The next thing we're doing is creating another variable uh, this one's called output file and this is where we're going to save the image 
So I'm giving it a path of images, the same folder that we have our other images, but you can put this in a different folder if you want, maybe create a folder called output or achievements or whatever you want. Um, and then I'm creating the file name. Basically, I'm getting the user's ID uh, and attaching the current date and time to the end of it because if you have multiple users running this command at the same time, you're gonna start creating, you want your file names to be individual to each person and each time. You don't wanna have one file. You don't just want like George to get uh, a file just called George and anytime anybody runs it, it's the file name is always George. So we, we don't wanna do that. We wanna keep this as unique as possible. So I'm using the user's ID and the time to create a new file. Well, that's the, we're creating the file name. The next step actually creates the file. So we're going image clone, which is that modified image that we made over here. And then we're saving it to the path that we declared in this variable. So images slash whatever the user's name is and the time. So it saves the file. Now this is really important because it's creating a file every time you do this. So if you don't have a lot of hard drive space, you wanna keep an eye on how much space your images are consuming. Uh, so that's what it's doing. It creates the file, which is a copy of this one with the text on it, and then it saves it to your system's drive. And then the very last thing we do is we do an await CTX channel send file async, and we output that file. We give it the path to the file, and that will go ahead and show the file in the channel that we launched the command. So let's build it and see if I screwed up anything build succeeded. So let's go ahead and run it. The command is show badge. So let's see what happens. All right, so we've started up. Uh, I'm gonna do show badge. Oh, I missed a step. All right, very important step. Uh, we got to go into our bots file and add this image commands. Uh, so we'll find that where we're registering our commands. So I'm just going to copy this and change this to point to the new file, image commands. All right. Build it again, make sure we're good. Build succeeded. Let's try again. All right, my bot's loaded up. Let's try show badge again and see what happens. Boom, there it is. It says, congrats, Skidvis, you have leveled up. That's the, the default command. And you can see the font's pretty big there. I think that's bigger than 15, but it's realizing that it has more space to play with, so it's scaling up the font a little bit. But if I go ahead and pass it a message, let's try it again. So, okay, I've typed in uh, a longer message. One of the things it needs is quotes because when you pass text to a command, um, every word is counted as a different argument. So you wanna make sure to have your text enclosed in quotes for this. And let's see what happens. All right, apparently that message wasn't long enough because it seems to be the same file size or font size but you can see that it uh, it does work and it takes whatever message I pass and it sends it to that. Let me try a longer message. Maybe I can get some something online real quick. All right, let's try something a little bit longer. There you have it. That would be uh, the Spotify ad apparently. And uh, that's a lot of text. And you can see if you click on this image, you'll get the full size of the image and it makes it easier to read any of the text that's in there. But as you can see, it's working like a champ. And there you have it, just like that. Quick and easy as promised. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. Um, there's plenty of documentation on this library at their GitHub page. Everything will be linked in the descriptions. The uh, helper library will also be in the descriptions so that you can just copy that in without having to write all that stuff yourself or modifying their version of it like I did. Um, again, please make sure to like and subscribe. I'd like to thank Ollie, my Patreon member, for posing this question in my Discord. Be sure to join that uh, and maybe become a Patreon member. Help me with my games. 
Thanks again for watching. I'm still Skid Vis. Peace out. Peace out. That's peace right there.